Need a shirt? Everyone does. Get a Dr. Phil shirt. It's cold outside. You might want to bundle up in a hoodie. Make it a Dr. Phil hoodie. And do you like beverages? Of course you do. You're a person. Whether it's milk, water, or booze, put it in a Dr. Phil mug. Exclusive Dr. Phil shirts, hoodies, mugs, and more. All at AdamRayComedy.com. Enjoy the show. So make some noise. You guys feeling good to be here tonight or what? What an amazing night to be alive. It's exciting to be here. Tonight's show is all about change. Okay? It's tough living in these meat suits, okay? We're all fucking up left and right. Right? Look at you. You cut your own hair before you came into the show tonight. We're all doing our best, okay? But sometimes your best isn't good enough. Okay, so you got to mix it up, right? Make a change, whatever that change is to you. Sometimes, maybe you got to change it up because you've been fired from 11 different Jimmy Johns in the past two years <laughs> because your abusive wine habits have contributed to your shit talking to the customers who don't want any part of that. Okay, they're just trying to figure out what bag of chips goes best with their veggie delight, and you're being a cocksucker at 2 p.m. <laughs> you got to make a change. Maybe you gotta make a change because you can't stop bowing to every Asian person you meet in public. <laughs> Which is funny, don't get me wrong, it's very funny. I'll laugh every time I do it, but it's racist. Okay, stay inside. Postmates that sushi player. <laughs> Maybe you're on Facebook too much commenting on your ex's page, right? With stuff like, hey, you look skinnier. Ozempic? How's that pillow doing I gave you? Every time I'm on Pornhub, I see someone that reminds me of you. If you keep saying shit like that, maybe it's time to say it with me, make a change. All right, 20 of you is enough. Now, I wrote a book recently. I don't know if you guys have seen my book tour. I've been out there doing it. Seen this book I wrote called We Got Issues. Yeah. You can get it wherever books are sold. Look at that face. Look at that fucking face. <laughs> what the fuck you looking at? That's a, that's a mean guy right there. A mean guy with, uh, with an affable uh, disposition, okay? Because we all got issues, you know? We're all trying to figure it out. Uh, let this book uh, serve as a, as a roadmap to your mind, okay? Okay, because there's uh, so many things we're trying to figure out. Now, since tonight's show is all about change, okay, I'd love to go into the crowd for a quick bit and figure out who's made a change uh, recently in their life. Uh, who's this to your right? Your boyfriend. Any sort of big changes in the last 48 hours between you two? How long you been dating this guy? Five years. Five years. Okay. Has he changed? No. No. Still the same piece of shit. <laughs> and what's his name? Kevin. Kevin, what do you think you got going on that Jessica is uh, perturbed by? Nothing wrong. <laughs> You're killing it? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Because you're not killing it, Kev. You're wearing a sweatshirt with the letter K on it. I'm going to assume that's for your name, player. Yeah. And your last name is on your sleeve. Is your name Kevin McDougal? It is? 
Why the fuck are you an adult man with a sweatshirt with your name on it? Just in case you get lost. You gotta dig deep, okay? My man, what's your first name? Adrian. Adrian, yeah. You got something going on in your life that you'd like to change? I just stopped drinking like a month ago. You just, okay. So you're a buzzkill now to most of your friends? So what are you, what are you replacing booze with, uh, Adrian? Jacking off. Jacking off. We'll be right back. That's how easy it is. That's how easy it is to make an adjustment. You're going one way, go the other. Now drinking, I'm gonna assume, Adrian, uh, provides uh, less, uh, you know, you're probably missing that. You know, there's only so many times you can jack off, right? And you can read that in my book, We've Got Issues. <laughs> Chapter four, there's only so many times Say it with me, you can jack off. You got it. Well, I wish the best for you, Adrian. My man, how about you? You got some uh, muscles and tattoos? Any tattoos you'd like to uh, celebrate? Uh, and follow-up question, any tattoos you'd like to change? To celebrate, no, but no. Okay, great. Um, uh, <laughs> what's your first name? Peter. Peter, and, and Peter, where are you from? Uh, Oregon. Oregon, yeah, and what brought you down here, Peter? Work. Work, and what is work, Peter? Security. Security, yeah. You've got a secure, uh, a secure vibe to you. <laughs> but on the flip side of that, you know, you, uh, you feel like a guy that uh, I don't want to talk to more than this conversation. <laughs> but that's because I can tell Peter is already thinking about the next fucking fight he's gonna <laughs> break up, you know? I mean, maybe Adrian stumbles down to the local uh, Wahoo Fish Tacos. Right, looking for a little pick-me-up. Maybe he's falling off the wagon. He's like, give me that Jack and Coke I was dreaming about last night. And Peter's like, I know you got a problem. No drinking for you. And then Adrian's like, all right, well, if I can't drink, I'll fucking jack off all over the Wahoo fish tacos. And that's where Peter steps in. Like a little chokehold. Was uh, being a security guard uh, uh, the dream, Peter? More or less, good for you. Were you always as big as a young, uh, young Pete? No, a lot smaller. So you hit a growth spurt, as they say, yeah? yeah. And who's this to your, uh, to your left, Peter? Amber. This is Amber. Hell yeah, where'd you meet Amber at? At a restaurant. At a restaurant, cool. Were you security at that restaurant? <laughs> no. Not at the restaurant, but you were doing security. And then you went over to the restaurant afterwards. I was at the restaurant doing security, but then I didn't do security after. I don't think I like your fucking attitude, Peter, if I'm being perfectly honest. I'm trying to get to know you and Amber, and you're putting up roadblocks. It's okay. The change is in your future, Peter. Security is uh, not going to be the, uh, the, the pinnacle of your, uh, of your peak, okay? You seem like a guy that's got a lot to offer. These tattoos uh, are, uh, are obviously a good talking point. The right sleeve is, is what, Peter? What do you got uh, scraped all over your wrist there? An ink blot, of course, yeah. A, a Sisyphist? So, a who? Sisyphist. You just made that up. What is a, what is a, Sith, a Sisyphist? Mythological creature. Let's go, yeah. And I saw the word rage was on your uh, arm. Is that, uh, where does that come from? How does that pertain... Probably a better time for you to fucking do that, don't you think? <laughs> you know how many times I've tried to get the definition of the word spithesis? And a big old black guy just cock blocks the friendship? It's okay, it's my roommate. He can do that. Well, if you guys get a chance, uh, take, a, take a deep look inside yourself and figure out what change is uh, needed. I, I gotta be honest, I, I'm trying to make changes in my life. Okay. Phil's uh, living glass half full most of the time, but uh, I've, been, I've been depressed recently. I've been down in the dumps. I don't want to uh, try to hide that from you guys. But I, I miss my wife, Robin. She's in Paris right now uh, trying to uh, promote some new gluten-free cream cheese <laughs> that she invested in. You should laugh. That's some bullshit. I told her not to go. I, I encourage uh, a side hustle, but I miss her. I miss her, baby. It's, uh, it's tough. It's tough sleeping uh, by yourself. You know, but, uh, you know, my, my best friend Oprah once told me, 
if, uh, <laughs> if you think it, you know, it might come true. Remember, remember the movie Hook with Robin Williams? Remember all those fat or orphans that, uh, you know, they didn't have any snacks, and then Robin Williams was like, we well, gotta believe, baby. And then, you know, they were like, all right, and they started thinking of it, and then boom, Caesar salad, chicken fingers, <laughs> peanut M&Ms, right? So maybe, just maybe, if we all uh, take a moment here to believe tonight, my wife Robin will show the fuck up. You guys want to help me out and see if we can figure that out? I'm talking about my wife, my better half. I'm going to need a little bit more support from the comedy store if we're going to get her out here tonight. I miss my wife. I, I wish she was here. I wish my wife was here. I've been so far and I'd like to be near to her. We all have those people in our life that we just can't stay away from. She's it for me. Sometimes I make her rub her tits on my beanbag before she leaves. Just so I remember what she smells like. Try it. That's love. Maybe you haven't felt it. Maybe you. Maybe, you know, maybe you've got other vices in your life. Maybe you jack off too much. Adrian. <laughs> but maybe if we all say my wife's name together, she'll appear out of fucking nowhere. You want to do it with me? Robin. 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 Holy fucking shit! Get the fuck out of here. I'm not in Paris anymore. You guys, give it up for my wife, Robin. This is incredible. Grab a mic, bitch. I, I, I am so excited to see this show. I, you know I never miss a taping. Well, she's, at every, she's been to all 25,000 tapings of the Dr. Phil show. That's Absolutely right. I'm always in the crowd. I have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we always, you know, mute your mic. But <laughs> yeah, you are uh, you are the best uh, life partner a guy could ask for. I just I adore you. Forty seven. Uh, how for, how long we've been? Forty eight. Forty eight years we've been married. Yeah. Yes. But who's counting, right? It's been a long journey together. You know. I mean, you know, it's like you know. And then what's your favorite episode of the Dr. Phil Show, sweetheart? You've been to so many. <sighs> Gosh, I think it was when that that mechanic guy. Oh yeah. Remember he cheated remember on that. his girl. Cheated on his girlfriend, yeah. yeah. And she was like, "Don't touch." Don't touch my don't pussy. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I can't say it. You can. Well, you know, it's a late night show now, so. Yeah. Yeah, that was the that was one of those episodes where you go, we gotta get, we gotta dig deep here because everyone's struggling. Everyone's got a one way pass uh, to, uh, to to right. what, what the fuck's going on street, you know? Yeah. Yeah, what did I tell that guy? I told him you gotta. You told him put the put those wires, put those back, wires in back in your pants. In your pants. Yep. And not in not in the car. Not in the car, yeah. I got a bunch of sayings like that in my book. We got issues. It's full of catchphrases and anecdotes. Now, Robin, you're pushing a new cream cheese, isn't that right? That's right. It's uh, out there. I hope you enjoy it on your bagels or wherever you want to put it. <laughs> what did you really go to Paris for, Robin? <laughs> it was for the cream cheese. Okay, 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 fair enough. Now, Robin, I know that, uh, you know, as we've been married, you know, things, uh, things get a little dicey. Anyone else been married over 30 years in the crowd tonight? Make some noise for yourselves. Anybody got a couple people over there? How about, how about two years? Anybody two years? Yeah, sir right there? Yeah. Yeah, how long you been married? Eight years, yeah. And what's the secret to a healthy eight-year marriage? She's always right. Yep. That's right. Shut up. <laughs> no, was, that's a joke. But see, that's a joke that we have between each other, right? I love you. I love I you. I love you, Phil. I tell her to shut up, and she, uh, you know, she, uh, <laughs> she hits me a lot. I'll be honest. She, uh, <laughs> we've got a, a fun physical. <laughs> yep. There it is. Yep. Look at that. Run the other way. <laughs> Well, have you ever tried, uh, Robin, every time we get into a big kerfuffle, she always uh, tells me we should go uh, bang it out in a car wash. That's right. That's a perfect place and enough time. Enough time, yeah. Five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, a little, it's like seven and a half. Seven but yeah. and a half. But there's all those noise machines going on. And, and the, the flaps. The flappers, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's more of a you situation. I feel like it's tough for me to to get it going with everything going on, but uh, it's fun. It is fun, yeah. Here's my impression of uh, my wife Robin uh, climaxing in a car wash. You want to hear it? Yes. <laughs> That's how I sound. <laughs> and this is him. Oh, you. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> Guys, my wife, Robin, let her hear it. Huh? She's the jewel of my eye, the apple of my gym. Give me a hug, sweetheart. I love you so much. Guys, one more time, huh? My better half of 47 years. Perfect, a perfect specimen. You guys having a good time so far? We got more. We got more, don't go anywhere. We're gonna be right back after a quick break with Anthony Jeselnik. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. So guys, Dr. Phil here. Hope you're enjoying the show. This has been a, a blast to do, and I hope you uh, find time in your busy day to, to make sure you're filling up on the right stuff. And I'm talking about food. You know what food is. You get it at the store, you have people make it for you. Sometimes you make it yourself. What's up, guys? But I think that, come this way with me. I think that the biggest issue in today's marketplace is finding nutritious and delicious meals, okay? That's why I want you to start messing around with Factor. Factor gets you restaurant quality meals in just under two minutes. Ready to eat, no mess, no prep. I mess with them every day, okay? They got breakfast stuff, dinner stuff, cookies, biscuits, oh my. Okay, there's keto, calorie plus, and protein options galore. Come this way. I ain't done them hard as a rock thinking about factor, okay? Because that's what life is all about, okay? Having more time for yourself. And if you don't have to cook and go to the store, See, that truck is driving past the speed limit because they're trying to get some factor meals up inside of them. What's up, ladies? Hey. See, they're fired up about factor. That's what you want. You want factor getting the ladies all fired up, hot and ready, just like a factor meal in less than two minutes. You can pause or reschedule your deliveries at any time. They're flexible with your schedule, player, okay? Dietitian approved, nutritious and delicious. We've done the math, it's less expensive than takeout or delivery. So go to factormeals.com slash be right back 50 with the promo code be right back 50 to get 50% off your order. That's factormeals.com backslash be right back 50 to get 50% off your order. Enjoy it, baby. Psych, why would I jump into traffic when I got factor meals at home, dick? Well, that video fucking backfired. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I thought somebody died out here. <laughs> My bad. All right. Um, <laughs> Tonight's first guest uh, is a living legend, okay? He's uh, written for The uh, Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. He's uh, originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, he's a gangster, okay? You know him uh, from all the Comedy Central roasts, uh, his numerous specials, his last one, uh, on Netflix, arguably my favorite special uh, of the last 10 years. Uh, he's a gangster. He's on a, a full, massive stand-up tour, uh, bones and all right now, selling out across the country, theaters of all shapes and sizes. Are you guys ready for your first guest tonight here on the Dr. Phil Live Show? You can do better than that, Comedy Store. I know who you wanted to see, and here he is, the one and only Anthony Jeffrey! Wow. Live in the flesh. Can you believe it? <laughs> I really can't. You know, I don't, there's certain people I don't see outside enough, you know? Uh, I, I got really close with my Uber Eats driver, uh, but then he, uh, he started stealing from me, you know? And I don't want to bring race into it, but uh, I'll let you think of uh, what he sounded like. But Anthony, what a... What is, uh, what is kind of your go-to meal, a uh, post-show? Because obviously, uh, comedy's a grind, right? You're a fit guy. Yeah, I gotta, keep, I gotta keep lean on the road. So usually after a show, it's in my rider. Sure. I just have like a big like, brick of fentanyl. A brick of fentanyl? <laughs> yeah. So you can get it in brick size now. I do. I mean, when you're a celeb, yeah. You probably could, have you been uh, uh, approached to endorse products? 
Like no. Anthony Jeselnik's <laughs> cock ring or something like that? No. Never, never once uh, I would lose the company all their money. You think so? I'm a bad spokesperson. Well, let's, okay, well, let's give, okay. Please. Well, let's try a little improv. Um, let's say I, I'm a juice company guy, mm -hmm. okay? And I've got a juice called Fun Juice. And the slogan is, one sip of this, and you know. <laughs> you got, you know, you gotta, all right, let me pick a different one. <laughs> how about, how about, a ta how about tampons? Tampons? Yeah, what's the tampon slogan again? Adrian? <laughs> Adrian, what's your favorite product that you're fucking with currently? You like vapes, okay, how about that? Are you a vape guy, Anthony Jeselnik? I'm more a tampon guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd be, a, I'd be a good tampon spokesperson. You would? I, hey, you gotta fucking use them. <laughs> Little aggressive, we'll probably use a second take, but it's yeah, I get it. It's either this or a rag, you dumb bitch. <laughs> Cut it, print it, send it off to Tampax. All right, see how easy you stepped into that? That yeah. was brilliant. I could do it, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, that's part of the dream, I guess, when you become a celeb, right? You just, people start coming at you left and right. Hey, plug this, post about this, you know. You, uh, that's probably got it. You got, are you big on Instagram? What do you post on social media, Anthony? Which question do you want me to answer? <laughs> you know, you lied to me about the format of the show. <laughs> All right, well. You told me it was gonna be fun. <laughs> Touche. You know, Dr. Phil, sitting up here with you reminds me, and I'm being dead serious right now. Please. 20 plus years ago when I started doing stand-up comedy. 20 I years was, now. Over 20 years, yeah. Mazel I was going, going around to open mic. I don't know what that means, Phil. Mazel Tov is, uh, it's some of the juice, I don't know, they're uh... <laughs> I've seen it been said, like somebody, like somebody has a baby and they go, <laughs> I don't know, something, you know, and then food happens, you know? You might, you might get to pull that shit with Oprah, not with me. Okay. But when I was, uh, when Dr. Phil started out, yeah. when you started out on the TV show, David Letterman would make fun of you every night. I remember that. With clips. And then one night he had Dr. Phil on the show and I was like, I've got to watch this. Yep. It'll be amazing. And it was, but Dr. Phil said... And I remember I'm a year into comedy, I'm going to open mics, and it sucks. I hate it, I'm not the star you see before you. <laughs> and I'm trying to find a way to keep going. And I see Dr. Phil and Letterman says, you know, I I'm so happy you came on the show after making fun of you for so long. Sure. It shows you're a good sense of humor that you would come on here. And he says, you know, my daddy always said, you wouldn't worry so much what people thought of you if you realized how seldom they did. And I know that's corny, that's folksy, that's fucking Forrest Gump. But when I heard Dr. Phil said, I was like, oh yeah. Why don't I give a fuck what these open micers think? I'm gonna be a goddamn star. Who do you think's gonna win Best Picture at the Oscars? I've been waiting for you to ask. Thank you so much. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a tie. Yeah, between between Barbie and Madam Web. That's you gotta funny. see Madam Web and IMAX. You gotta do it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, is it a, it's a provocative film, right? It's a woman who becomes a spider, but then has to go back to her old high school to find... What, it, what is it about? That's what? exactly what it's about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a superhero film, correct? I don't know how super it is. Right. <laughs> Shots fired, Anthony. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. a film buff yeah, yourself. I know I've... Uh, I've seen them all. You've seen them all. Is there a movie that, if you're going to play... Um, you know, if you're gonna play a movie at your funeral, you know, mm -hmm. to lighten the mood. Which I will do. Which you will do, yeah. I know you will. Yeah. Cause you're a fun guy. Uh huh. Despite your third base coach wardrobe tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I'm no beacon of fashion. I look like, you know, I look like I'm gonna open a checking account for you. you do. And then, you know, introduce you to my son-in-law who's probably gonna drug you, you know? You look like, you look like the agent for all the animals at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> That's a, that's a tough gig to get. I'll take that as a compliment. There's 16 gorilla drummers in that band. Yeah. 
All right, so you're a movie buff. And no one likes to think about expiring, right? I feel like we want to be here for as long as possible. Expiring, you mean dying? Dying, yeah. yeah. I, just, I try to come up with fun ways to say dark shit. You that know? Is, that's fun. So if you're going to... Well, first of all, how about this? Dying in general. I think about, you know, as I'm getting older, what would be the best way to go? You know, I used to uh, be in a chat room, and uh, girls would often... I think they were girls, but they, they'd often text... <laughs> They'd say stuff like, would you rather drown to death or be burned alive? Mm -hmm. Which I thought was a, an interesting way to, uh, you know, to, to break the ice. But the more I thought about it, for sure burn, you know? You want to burn. You want to feel it. Yeah, I want to yeah, feel something. And, and also, I feel like you could stop, drop, and roll your way out of anything. <laughs> I you, and I talk about that in my book, We've Got Issues, oh, Anthony. Please. Which is... Which is right here. I'll give you a copy on the way out. But if you're going to burn or drown, I guess both suck. But what way have you thought about it for you? Which way would oh, you? Oh, I think about this all the time. I think the best way would be to be lit on fire. Yeah. And then put out with water that you drown in. You know what I mean? So like, oh, thank God the fire's over. Here let comes me part two. The, let me appreciate this water. Yeah. You'd be happy. You would be happy. Yeah, I mean, well, it's like you ever been uh, hit in the face with a water balloon by a fat chick? This morning. Yeah. You know, it, it hits double hard, you know? Yeah. Well, there was a point to that, but I just... I was trying to connect over, uh, over the, uh, I guess, the untimely ways to go. And I, I don't like to think about it, but I do. And my movie uh, would be probably Goonies or the original uh, Willy Wonka. You would show Goonies at your funeral, not while you die. I'd probably put, well, if I'm going to die to a movie, it'll probably be, uh, I don't know, Notting Hill with Julia Roberts. That's a, that's a good one. I think it'd be fun. I'm dying. What my movie's playing in the background? I want my friends to come over and say goodbye. They come in, and they're watching A-Team. The movie, the movie A-Team. I don't know if you've seen it. It's, it's, it's bad. But they're watching that, and then right in like, the middle of the movie, my corpse falls through the screen. Okay, well, I, like a 3D. I kind of want you to die now. That sounds yeah. awesome. <laughs> I also haven't seen that movie in a while, so that'd be a twofer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dying sucks, but yeah. I don't know, but you're, li you're living life to the fullest right now. I don't think dying's that bad. You never okay. hear people complain about it. That deserved more laughter. That was funny. I don't think this is the smartest crap. Well... How about this? Mitch McConnell is, uh, you know, getting older. Uh, what? <laughs> he's, I, I don't know if you've seen him on TV recently, but it's... National uh, treasure, Mitch McConnell. I mean, he's done some shady shit, but we all have. We all have. What, yeah, I think that's important to recognize. Like, it's like so much shady shit. What's the shadiest thing you've done, not uh, in your life, but that you've thought about, right? Because we all have those negative thoughts where you go... Oof, I could do that right now, but, you know, then I wouldn't be able to go you know, back to I've, Arby's. I've, I don't want to sound like, a, like the best person ever, but I've never thought about doing something shady right. without then immediately doing it. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm going to do that shady thing. It's fun. When did you, when did you realize that Los Angeles was going to be your home? Because you're from Pittsburgh originally, right? Yeah. Anyone else from Pittsburgh? <laughs> That's fucked up. They're quiet. People don't get out from, from the PA. Is that, uh, is that what we're learning tonight? You made it out, but because you had a dream. At what age was stand up uh, on the radar for you, Anthony? Uh, not until, I mean, I always loved it, but not until, you know, I was out of college in my 20s living out here that I think I could do it. Right. It didn't seem like a job you could actually get. You were just like, oh, I could maybe work for one of those guys. And I was like, oh, no, I could do that better than they all do it. Yeah, I, th I used to think magicians were stand up comedians. You used to think that? But they're just rapists, you know? <laughs> Oh, too soon? Do you mean, now when you say this, do you mean they're like legitimate rapists? I know or... two magicians that are pretty handsy. So okay. I guess, I guess, you know, I don't want to. So you don't consider magic to be rape. It's like they do the show and that's all well, good. And then it's afterwards. a mind rape for sure. That's true. And you can read more about that in uh, We've Got Issues. This is turning out to be a great prop. Yeah, I don't know. Magic, it's scary, too, you know? I don't know. It, there, trust is a big deal with me, you know? Like, I remember the first time I met you uh, at a show, I was like, this guy's chatting me up, you know? I dig the back and forth. I trust him. Um, but that's, you know, not an easy thing to come by. I think more often than not, you meet someone and you go, I don't like their energy. I don't like their face, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I'm a big vibe guy, you know? 
I'm a handshake man. You know what I mean? You learn everything you know about someone by the way they shake hands. Sure. You know, is it a firm handshake? Is it a pound? You know, is it just like a high five? Is it weak? I learn everything I can possibly need to know about someone by shaking their hand. That got real fucking dark, I gotta be honest. <laughs> but I get what you're saying because the transfer of energy, right? So if people come in, uh, you know, I've, has anyone ever done the bump and then they try to pull back, high five, do a chest bump, right? And you're like, we might as well fuck at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm so confused sexually, right? Now, uh, Bones and All, the name of your tour. Mm -hmm. Massive. You, you took a break from touring, correct? Sure. All right, what else we got? Yeah. What do you think about teachers and students having sex? Because I'm, be I'm being for realsies, because, you know, the first time I heard of teachers getting, uh, you know, changing the, uh, you know, the, uh, what the, what the uh, curriculum was going to be, mm -hmm. I thought, okay, well, you know, who's the kid and what does the teacher look like? You know, because more often than not, people chastise the teacher. They go, how could you? And then you meet this 14-year-old fucking Rico Suave, and you're like, all right. <laughs> I get it, <laughs> you know, I'd fuck, you know, that, that's a cool kid. But yep. that being said, this is probably not a popular take for sure, but, but what, is, what is your stance on, I guess, just, um, I'm actually not sure what the question was, to be honest, Anthony, but. You know, I understood the point you were trying to make and you know, this is kind of uncomfortable, but I think that teachers and students, you know, naturally belong together. Totally. Sexually. And I think you talk about, everyone talks about, like, you know, the 14-year-old boy sleeping with this 35-year-old teacher. Right. You it's know, I think that's, I think it's wrong. But if you get a 14-year-old girl <laughs> sleeping with a 35-year-old teacher, who am I to judge? <laughs> yeah. You ever play Candy Crush? Yeah. I love Candy Crush. I don't even really play the game. I just like, I just like giving it money. Are you, you're not a gambler, are you? No. All right. What else we got here? You're a big sports guy, though, which is I weird like because people that love sports historically love to throw cash uh, at some of those said sports, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you're wearing the Dodgers hat. I've seen you at Dodgers games. I've seen you on the uh, Jumbotron. I've seen you... Sometimes they'll cut to Mary Hart, and then they'll go, oh, shit, look who's behind Mary Hart, you know? They, they do that? Oh, yeah. They do that to Mary Hart. Oh, they, oh yeah. Well, let's, you know, Mary Hart, she had her time in the sun. It's true. She flew too close. She flew too close, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to, I don't know, there's, again, I feel like as you're, as you're rising, your star, there's got to be a point where you go, the pressure's on, right? You've had uh, uh, four great specials, right? Now you're getting ready to do your fifth. Mm -hmm. Which, come on, that's exciting news for anybody who's a stand-up comedy fan. You're one of the best in the fucking game and a personal favorite of mine. I mean, it's, you know, it's not that big a deal to go out and just, you know, tour, stand up and do specials. It's, you know, I could have just, you know, done a character. <laughs> we'll be right back. Well, and you're not wrong, but, uh, but there's, there's not just one way to eat a Reese's, you know? And I think sometimes people find that uh, being edgy and uh, shock value humor is uh, an easier way to the top, you know? I could make jokes about abortion, I just, you know, I've been there, done that, you know? Mm -hmm. But congrats, you yeah. know? Oh, thanks. Thanks. Um, You're gonna make my mustache fall off. <laughs> you do have a, I'll tell you this much, we talked about this off air, your ability to structure a joke is banana city, okay? I don't, I don't, let's be honest, there's a lot of people that, uh, 
you know, it, take, it takes a while to get to the punchline. But you, you told me that you really, early on, if you don't mind re-sharing this tale about learning how you kind of configured a joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you mind sharing that again? It's, it's, it's fascinating. Yes, I do. <laughs> no, I, when I, uh, I decided I was going to get into stand-up comedy, I, uh, I was a teacher at the time, and I brought one of my students in... <laughs> And Wait a I second. said, <laughs> I said, do you mind if I try some of these out? I got to go to a mic tonight, and it, here I am. That's the exact story you told me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, so you told me uh, when you started to kind of cut the fat on a joke, it was an open mic, I believe, and you were watching the people performing, and you, you kind of decided what your style was going to be, more or less. Yeah, just like not going to waste any words. I'm not going to be like, what else is going on? I'm just going to be like, here are the jokes, and then I'm going to leave. I'm not going to be like, and oh, uh, what was it about my mom? Like, I don't give a shit about your mom or you. Make me laugh or get the fuck out of here. Have you always uh, been that way? Have you always been like, you know, time is money and, and money is time, you know? No, I just always appreciated that, you know, the hard work. Like, you can, you can there's, there are people out there who are just a vibe, and that's great, sure. but I never wanted to be that. Like, I'm, I, I'm going to show you my work. Is there a joke currently that you're telling, and I don't, I'm not going to make you tell it here, but that you're real fired up about? Like, when does Anthony Jeselnik think of a joke? You know, like, here's my impression of you, like, thinking of a joke, what I feel like it is. Ready? Like, you're lying in bed, you know. You know, you're having a wet dream, you know. <laughs> Then you wake up. <laughs> something, something, dead baby, you know? And then you just, mm -hmm. maybe throw a retard in there, you know, just something. <laughs> but my point is you're better than most. <laughs> Truly. I got, I got your point, yeah. How do you, when the bit comes into your head, uh -huh. how do you truly go, here it is, and then now, now it's ready, basically? I write it down. Gotcha. All right, anybody else got any fucking questions? I think that's... <laughs> I, do want to, I do want to say this before we let you go. Um, real treat to have you here. Real treat. You're a gangster. Listen. I was not totally sure uh, that, uh, that I could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, and I was right. Look, sometimes I like to do favors. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> What's a non-comedy favor you've done recently? I mean, everything I do is a favor. Truly. Pretty like much. Held a door for someone or... Oh, no, I don't do that. Yeah. yeah. What about if someone doesn't do it for you? Are you the type of guy that's like, fuck you then? I'm, I, that's exactly what I say. Yeah. I say, fuck you then. <laughs> yeah. All right, so... Um... What, about, what do you think about people who hold the door open and then you got to run to the door? What do you think about that? Yeah, so who am I in the equation? You're, you're, I'm in front of you. And you held the door. I turn, I hold the door, and I'm like, Dr. Phil, I got this. But you're like 50 yards away. So you're, so you're forcing me into cardio. I'm forcing you into a full sprint. Well, I mean, normally I'd say, let's, you know, let's do it. Game on, you mm -hmm. know, but... Uh, Chances are I'm probably, you know, tired from writing my book, We've Got Issues, <laughs> which you can now find at most Barnes and Nobles. Look at that fucking face, by the way. We've Got Issues would be a good name for like a store that just sold magazines. <laughs> See, how the fuck did you think of that, dude? All right, now to piggyback on your quickness, I'd like to do a quick game here before we get out of here. Obviously, uh, you didn't start on the roast, okay? You started, I think, writing jokes for The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, correct? Something like that. Okay. And uh, we'll edit this out. And uh, <laughs> you started crushing it on the roast, right? People started to go, who's that? Uh, who's that white guy, right? And, uh, and, and it was exciting to a lot of people. And so I've always told myself, well, I want to learn from the best. I got to try to fuck with the best. So uh, I'd like to do a little game uh, where I throw up some people, uh, some figures who uh, deserve to be roasted and toasted. I think we all do, by the way. You, you got to hit someone and hug them at the same time so that you don't fuck them up too hard. But you got you to gotta get shit on, you know. And if you're German, it's probably in the chest region, right? Um, okay, I'm the only one that Googles German porn on 
Wednesday nights. So I'm going to put up some pictures, and I wrote down some roast jokes, and, uh, and, and, and I want to basically get your uh, take. A yay or nay from a master. If it's a good joke or if it's a bad joke, that's all you got to do. Right. In a game we like to call Roasting People. Well, that's forty dollars well spent. <laughs> All right, first picture, Steven. All right, so this is the Octo Mom, right? Oh, it's about time someone took down the Octo Mom. <laughs> so this is uh, the Octo Mom, and I wrote, "Jesus Christ, is that your belly or, a, or another tit?" <laughs> oh, okay, that's we got you on camera laughing. <laughs> that's it. All right, next slide, Steven. I like it. Put that one in the keeper bank. Now, who's that? Um, I think that's Dr. Pimple Popper. <laughs> I just saw the Michael Jackson musical, by the way. You seen it? Oh, yeah. So, he, so you, good. It's so good. It's so good. I was watching Anthony. I was like, I don't think he did it. I had never, uh, watching the musical, I'd never heard any of those songs. Right. I just heard, I heard the other ones. Right, they had some the originals. Mm -hmm. Not too great, but... No. But yeah, when you're moonwalking and, and uh, crushing melodies, you know. But so I wrote down uh, uh, Michael Jackson, uh, more like, you know, can I, can I smell it? I don't know. Um, <laughs> can I smell it is what I put. Can, can, I, can I smell it? Well, I have a friend who had, uh, a friend of a friend told me that they went to the Neverland Ranch mm -hmm. and that he was big on scents, right? Not common scents. We're talking Yankee Doodle Smelly. Candle Company, uh, yeah. lavender, you know, some sort of summer breeze. And so he'd go up to these kids, Joe Biden style, and sniff their head. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, so the joke was about information that was not in the setup. Correct. Okay. I think you just need to say that in the beginning. Like, this next joke... This next joke is about... The punchline has got nothing to do with the setup. Okay, great. And then you can tell. How about this? Uh, Michael Jackson's got an album called One, which is all of his number one hits. It's got all the favorites. Black or White, uh, Man in the Mirror, and OK, Admit It, I Fucked That Kid in His Ass. <laughs> I like the second one better than the first okay, one. Okay, moving yeah. on. Next slide, Steven. Okay, so for this one, that's, uh, that's R. Kelly. Are these all gonna be people who have been wrongly convicted? <laughs> yes. Uh, so this is R. Kelly and I wrote down, uh, hey, it could have been worse, I could have pooped on you. So in this joke, you're R. Kelly. You are R. Kelly talking to his victims. Fuck! Yeah, I should have set it up. Yeah. I thought it was clear that I was doing a voice. Okay. All right. Uh, next slide, Steven. All right, let's see you try to take this guy down. Let's see what woke nonsense you spout over this one. Over my president. <laughs> I mean, he's not, he, not everything he says is wrong, you know? It, so this one's an act out. Okay. Have you bought the Trump shoes? Perfect for running from an indictment. That's good. Next slide, Steven. Get a couple more smiles out of Anthony Jeselnik. What the fuck is that? All right, so this one's just a, an impression. This is, uh, so I, I'd put the slide up at the show. Even if it was an open mic, I'd bring a projector. Of course. And I'd go, here's, here's Joe, I'd go, look at that guy. Here's Joe Biden eating ice cream. <laughs> Vanilla. <laughs> Next slide, Steven. Um, hey, so. Um, Anthony, I sent you a friend request, and you didn't... You sound more like Elizabeth Wurzel. Fuck yeah, who's that? The, bl <laughs> the, blonde, the blonde him, the blonde woman him. Oh, right. Who's in jail now. For doing what? Some dumb shit. 
she lied about her machine. She's like, my, my machine can test your blood. And they were like, oh, cool. Oh, Elizabeth uh, Holmes. Holmes. What did I say? Wurzel? Wurzel. Who was that? <laughs> I think I'm thinking of an author. <laughs> Elizabeth Wurzel should be in jail. <laughs> Next slide, Stephen. Uh, oh, 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 oh. I didn't really think this game through, I'll be honest with you. I wanted to prove to you I could do impressions, but Tim Allen has been in the news recently for uh, being uh, accused of having a shitty uh, attitude on set. Uh, That's right, Casey Wilson. Casey Wilson came out, SNL alum, said uh, on the filming of the Santa Claus TV show that he was uh, putting coal in everyone's stockings, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what I wrote down is, when asked to comment on the allegations, uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor said, you can go fuck yourself to infinity and beyond. I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, it's Al Borland what you're doing right there. Sure. Okay. Do we got any more slides, Stephen? Okay. Oh, America's sweetheart, Dolly Parton, you can't. Yeah, I you don't think can. I can touch this one. I mean, I've tried. Anthony Jeselnik, everybody. Let's say you're for him real quick. You're a fucking living legend, and I love you, baby. One more time for Anthony Jeselnik. I'll let him hear real quick. How exciting was that? A gangster from top to bottom. Guys, before we bring out our next guest, uh, I've got a special treat for you, okay? Uh, I mentioned him earlier, okay? Somebody who's been a, uh, a senator uh, in the United States uh, here for, uh, since 1985. It's a big deal. And he recently retired, okay, because uh, it's just time to make a change, okay? So I'd like to bring him out and talk about his post-retirement plans real quick. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mitch McConnell. Let him hear it. Come on out, Mitch. Don't be afraid. How fucking long is this song, Steven? All right, there we go. Mitch McConnell, ladies and gentlemen, huh? Mitch, take a seat for me real quick. Can you sit down on your own? Look at you, huh? Oh, don't freeze up on me. There you go. No, that's an easy. Mitch McConnell, ladies and gentlemen, huh? This is a, this is a Hollywood first. He doesn't travel too often. Take it out of the house. Mitch, how you doing? You look good. Got a couple questions well, here for you. Well, let me begin by just stating <laughs> what a deep privilege it is to be in the most liberal state in the country with one of the great doctors of our time, Dr. Phil. I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. You're from Sheffield, Alabama, huh? Let me just begin by saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can already tell it's gonna be a quick segment. <laughs> it has been the honor of a lifetime to be serving the people of Kentucky. Okay. Uh, and the people of our great country as the longest serving Senate Majority Leader in our nation's history. That's right. I wrote that down here. What is the question, Dr. Phil? Let's just get right into it. <laughs> School shooting, so you... <laughs> now, let's move on. What's your favorite color? Aside from African American. McConnell got one. Ugh! You thought I lost my move, didn't you, little bitch? 
You don't get to this level in our country without being a sneaky little bitchy bitch. Touche. Ask, yeah, ask the question. Okay, well, look, I, I'm a fan from afar, but... Uh, as, go, so is that guy who stormed the Capitol in the front row. You look like you did storm the Capitol. Where you were did. you on January 6th? My God. You weren't there? No, that's Peter. He's a security guard at Best Buy. He's fine. Well, why don't you ask Peter what his views on guns are then and not me? Well, January 6th was a crazy time. I know where I was. Where were you, Dr. Phil? Dave and Buster's. Dave and Buster's. <laughs> <laughs> Just set a personal record at Ski Ball when I get a text. Well, let me begin by stating that the president is both practically and morally responsible for those events of that day. Right. But I'm still going to support him in this upcoming election. <laughs> Well, you know, it's good, to, it's good to make choices and stick to your guns, you know? I gotta be honest, I did not think you were gonna catch that. <laughs> Uh-oh. There we go. Ask the question. So, you're... you're By the way, this is extremely uncomfortable, maintaining this position in my face for this long a period of time. Well, I simply did not expect to experience the level of pain that I am going through. <laughs> I told you you could just do the voice. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Dr. Phil, I'd like you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'd like you to take that mustache off and shove it up your pussy. How about that? Okay, okay. Shove that mu- Could he shove that mustache up his pussy or what? <laughs> Who here wants to see Dr. Phil shove that mustache up his little pussy? I want well, to say that. I'll take that as a compliment Give me because a kiss, Dr. Phil. <laughs> oh, I I don't think I want to get anywhere near okay. your mouth if that's all right with you. Mitch, sit down for a second. Absolutely. I got a real question for you. Uh, Kentucky is where you're from. Anyone from Kentucky here? Oh, well, Kentucky's a great state. It's a great state. It's a, it's okay. I've been there. We have the, is anybody drinking bourbon here this evening? Well, that's what I love. But I'll tell you. What I don't like about I was just crowd show fucking dead whenever I ask a question. <laughs> Fuck you, you bastard bitch. <laughs> now, where was this sort of enthusiasm uh, when you were in office, you know? Because you froze up a lot of the time. Every other uh, interview wait, wait, I'd wait, see, wait, Mitch wait. McConnell, what are your thoughts on health care? And you go, Bleh. <laughs> What was that about? Well, the, the, pres the President Biden recently called to check on me, and I told him I got sandbagged. What does that mean? Break I have that no down. No fucking idea, actually. <laughs> now, Mitch, I know in your spare time you like yeah. to uh, you like to have some fun. I do. Right? You're a, you're a sweets guy. I, I, I am a sweets guy. Yeah. Right. And what's your favorite uh, what's your favorite treat if you're having a let's say you've just passed a bill that uh, you know allows uh, women not to have any control of their Absolutely. bodies anymore? What yeah. uh, what what are you diving into? I love a tootsie roll. <laughs> It's oddly specific, I'll tell you that much. Well, my wife is of Chinese descent. Okay, that wasn't a... <laughs> I don't think anybody was curious about that info. I love those little fortune cookies. We oh, those it. are fun. Oh, we get it, Pia. My, my, my guilty pleasure... People in the back, can you hear me okay? One of my guilty pleasures is going to P.F. Chang's and eating a little fortune cookie and... I like to read the little note to myself and it tells me everything's going to be okay. That's my favorite candy. <laughs> What's your favorite sex position? 69. <laughs> How do you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Sound it out. I heard a shixty in there. It's got to be 69 for sure. It's got to be. You know, you know, a lot of people don't know this. But before the stroke or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, uh, it was definitely a stroke of I, some sort. I used to do a lot of reverse cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> I love to wrap, wrap my, my Asian wife. In okay, a, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. All right, none of this is usable. In a Confederate now, flag. Interracial yeah. porn really gets me going, too. For sure. I well, love interracial porn. Well, it shows that we can come together. I love when up. Mitch? 
We'll be right back. No, we'll keep her right here. We'll keep her right here. Mitch, before I let you go, yeah. you told me you that, to talk to well, somebody, you, you yeah. told, no, you told me that oh, you've been shit. working on uh, some impressions. And I've I told you how big of an impression fan I am. I, some of my favorite impressionists in comedy include uh, Dana Carvey, Fuck Frank that, Caliendo, yeah. uh, yeah. Melissa Villasenor, there's a guy named yeah. Matt Friend who's crushing okay. the game right now. Uh, you told me that you're trying to get uh, a part of that world, and yeah. you said you've been working on some impressions. So uh, can I can I can I see uh, some of those? You told me you did Howard Stern. Let me uh, let me talk to that guy for a minute. Doctor Phil, I got to tell you, right? <laughs> you're fucking me over, right? This is my show. You're trying to ask these disgusting questions. I mean, you even brought a robin on the show. Fuck you. Fuck you. Robin's my thing. Right. Pretty good. Pretty good. So so here's what I want to know. Here's what I want to know. I want to know this. Dr. Phil, right? Sure. You, you have this mustache. Right? Sure. When you're eating pussy, when you've eaten pussy, right? Sure. Did. It's past tense. You, 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 you don't do it anymore. You don't eat pussy, right? I mean, you right. know, if it's, if it's my birthday. Do you? Does the... <laughs> Robin, are you hearing this? Okay, right. Do you, does the mustache cause any friction? Like, do you ever feel the, the mustache against the vagina? Does that do anything for you? Oh, that's, the best, that's the best part. Right, yeah. right. What, uh, talk, talk to me about that, right? Like when, do you go, wake up in the morning and say, I'm Dr. Phil, I can fuck anyone I want? You gotta think that, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, most, most days I right. d definitely do, right. yeah. Now, now, Dr. Phil, talk to me about that, right? You ever tickle your scrotum? Oh, sure. Uh, right. Well, it's not more of a tickle, more of a kind of poke it, you know? <laughs> right. No. Why, why poking versus... Because I don't leave my house anymore. I don't touch anything. Right. Well, but look, you, there's you a... Poke there's, it, you tickle. What do you do? Right. There's a lot of advantages to poking right. uh, your scrotum versus tickling. And right. you can read more about it in my book, We've Got right. Issues, right. which is currently on sale at Barnes hey, hey, & Noble. Wait, now right. tell me this, uh, uh, Mitch. Uh, uh, you've, been, you've, been, you've been doing an Austin Butler, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun doing him. But this crowd doesn't give a shit, so that's great. <laughs> they truly don't. Let's pick a different guy. Uh, yeah. How about Barack Obama? Oh, I can do that too. Hello, everybody. How are you guys? Come on now. Big fan Hello, of this Hello, Comedy guy. Store. Come on now. It is, it is good to be here. This is the main room. This is where it all goes down. I appreciate that. Dr. Phil, thank you so much. You know, I voted for you, and then I realized, uh, you know, that you were a huge pothead. I appreciate that. I do. And so uh, actually, studies have shown that Pot actually can reduce anxiety. Uh, made me a better performer. I think everybody should try that. So, well, you know who would uh, <laughs> beg to differ is Donald Trump. Well, let, excuse me. Shut your mouth. You're a nasty woman. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Doctor Phil is a nasty guy. He is a dead dog and a fraud. And I will, look at this guy, he's a great, look at this guy. <laughs> you see? There are so many people, they come into the store, they laugh, they smile, there's a lot of radical liberals here. <laughs> Excuse me, stop clapping, look at this Mexican, what a guy. <laughs> what a guy. Dr. Phil. And Mitch Thank McConnell, mad friend, Thank everybody. Make some noise Thank for him. Oh, what a fucking Thank legend. You. I love you. I love you. Dr. Get the Phil. fuck out of here. Get the fuck, fuck out of here. Fuck you, bro. I love you. Fuck you, bro. One more time for mad friend, huh? Gracing us with the hits of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You guys having a good time? We got one more special treat for you. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. shell idea was picked up by Taco Bell. Sick. But because we didn't send in our authenticity certificate, bummer, we didn't make any money off of it. Double bummer. <laughs> but there's good news, American. Yeah. Old Tyler and Caleb here have millions of billions of hundreds of ideas, man, that you can make at home using Doritos. So check it out. <laughs> right? Caleb? Mom! Mom, Caleb disappeared. You're smoking too much reefer. Try snapping again. 
You gotta stop doing that. Other meals with Doritos. Linguini al Dorito. Jerky Dorito nachos. The Dorito Pop-Tart Sub. The Dorito Potato Medley. Corn Dogs. With Doritos! Five Hour Doritos. Dorito Gummy Bear Salad. Southwest Style. Mmm. Dorito Grigio. Weed! So that's it, America. Thanks for checking us out. Remember, just like Taco Bell said, think outside the bun. Outside the bun. There's tons of foods out there. What sort of creative things can you come up with? Why don't you just come up and send them to us at... Tyler and Caleb, P.O. Box 947-826-12, Wasco, Tucson, Alaska. We'll take your creative food ideas and we'll make them. And we'll eat them and let you know how they are. Okay. I'm Tyler. I'm Caleb. And we are... Potheads who love to cook. <laughs> Hell yeah, Father, you love to cook. Damn it. Caleb! Mom! Caleb! Mom, he's not coming back! <laughs> Shit! Wow, another amazing video. You guys having a good time? This has got to be one of my favorite episodes we've done so far. I think you can do a little bit better than that. Are we enjoying ourselves tonight? Adrian, how you feeling? You haven't whacked off yet, have you? In your mind, you have. Uh, guys, my next guest is a true, uh, a true uh, gangster of the comedy world. Uh, you might know her from hit films like Girls Trip, uh, Lego Movie, Haunted Mansion. She's got specials galore. Showtime, She Ready, They Ready on Netflix. Uh, she's got a, a book coming out called I Curse You With Joy on May 7th, which will be a beautiful follow-up to her New York Times bestseller, The Last Black Unicorn. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way uh, from Los Angeles, California, here tonight, give it up right now for the one and only Tiffany Haddish. Make some noise, huh? I've always wanted to do that, and it never works until tonight. <laughs> Tiffany Haddish, ladies and gentlemen. One more time for Tiffany Haddish, huh? What a fucking sweet treat. <laughs> I always wanted to meet you, Dr. Phil. This uh, is amazing. This is amazing. You're beautiful. Your energy is palpable. Yeah, that's one thing I always love about you when I see you out and about. You're just, you're full of life, you know? You're pumped to be around. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Now, Tiff, uh, what uh, your your uh, you know your your you told me your book's getting ready to come out. That's pretty cool. I've, I've written a couple books. Got one right here called "We Got Issues." Yeah. Yeah, and we do got issues. But your book is going to be called "I Curse You with Joy." Mm hmm Yeah. What's that? What's that pertaining to? You know. Well, it's pertaining to like you know how people are always saying like negative stuff on the internet and everything. Oh yeah. And then they're never like really like. Well, there's some people. There's a lot of people that actually are like saying good things, but your words, when you spell a word, you're putting out a, a thing, an energy, a curse, if you will. Yep. So all my words are cursing people with joy and happiness. That's my intention. Give it up to for that. To bring joy and happiness. Give it but up for that. But the stories are dark. The stories in there are dark. It's a lot of painful shit in that book, but they always got a funny little twist to it. Well, that's the best part about, okay. That, uh... <laughs> That's the best part about comedy, Tiff, is that you got to, you got to, you know, knock people down with some real shit and then tug at their heartstrings a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. and, let, and let them know it's all, it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Because we've all been through some shit, you know, and tonight's show's about change, you know? Oh, this is what the show about change? We got a theme. <laughs> okay. Well, I changed my hair color, so. I love that. Yeah, when do you, when do you decide that, that doing, that changing your hair is the move, you know? And is it like a quick, because sometimes I'll wake up and go, I want to shave my fucking mustache. I want to shave my head and my pubes. And not in that order, you know? <laughs> so. You do your pubes and then your head? <laughs> so you a dickhead. I like it. Let me kiss your scalp. <laughs> Uh, uh, so what? <laughs> what was the question, Doctor Phil? I don't Phil? fucking know. Uh, 
something about pubes. Oh no, uh, you're uh, uh, shaving your head, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. that's a cool. I mean, you know, that's. I think anybody making a big change like that, it, it's got to be nerve wracking. But what is it just? Is it confidence? Or are you just like fuck it? I want to do what I want to do. Well, you know, all them years of wearing these uh, hairstyles that yep. they hurt. You know, they hurt. Yep. Like, uh, I, I feel like uh, if. It, it, see, you wouldn't understand because you're not a black woman. Well, give me a chance. If, uh, okay, let me... Give me a chance to understand is all I want. You want a chance? So, uh, tell me, what, what's it like? So, so I have 4C hair, okay. okay? 4C hair is a certain curl pattern, okay? Right. And it's a tight, it's a tight curl, okay? Yep. And um, over the years, like when I was a little girl, my mom would do my hair and it would like tangle up and she would have to comb it and my hair would break unbreakable combs. Mm. It was very painful. And then as I got older, you know, you get your hair pressed with the hot comb and it would burn my ears and burn my scalp. And then and then, uh, then I got a little bit older and it was hair weaves and perms and all this stuff. And it was, it was giving me headaches. And then I became like famous and it was like all the time somebody's doing something to your head every single day touching your scalp every motherfucking day pulling at your motherfucking thoughts uh, and it was oh, fucking with my spirit it was bothering me it was bothering me and for years I would be like oh I'll just cut this all off if I gotta put a wig on it'd be easier to put it on a bald head as opposed to a head full of 4C hair that is very thick and hard to braid and then it's be like you put that wig on top of that braided hair and then it's like pulling your face back which makes you look younger so that's nice <laughs> but it was so painful it was so painful so right. one day um, you know it was COVID and I was like I'm not gonna be on no red carpet no time soon and I had been reading the Bible and I had been reading the Torah and it was saying, know thyself, know who you are, right? And I knew where every dot, mole, dent, uh, scar, everything on my whole body, but I didn't know what was going on on my scalp. And I know I had been dropped a few times. <laughs> my mom dropped me like two times. I talk about this in the book, about how my mom dropped me and... And she didn't get me stitches on the one time and when I fell on the back of my head, um, she just put some tissue in there and just, and just pulled my hair tight in the ponytail holder and it was fucked up. We didn't, have, we didn't have no insurance. And she also didn't, you know, cause you know, when you take a kid to the hospital, they automatically think you abuse them. And she did drop me, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, so I wanted to see what was going on on my scalp. I wanted to see what it looked like. Like how you could see some of your scalp, I wanted to see all of mine. So I wanted to know. I wanted to know, is there moles there? Is there, you know, is there gashes there? Like, did, it, did that scar in the back of my head heal up good? Is, do I got a hot dog head? Is it real roly-poly back there? Is it, is it super loose? Is it super tight? I wanted to know. So um, I just cut it all off one day. I was on, you know, I, and I decided to do it in front of the world because I wanted to inspire other women that have to wear tight braids and had their head pulled back and all that to just let that shit go. We in a pandemic, bitch. Be bald. See your scalp. And I did it and it felt so good and it was like so weird. I got three moles on my scalp. Um, I have two scars, and um, it is a little meaty back here. It's a little roly-poly in the back. And um, after I did it, I went outside, and it was raining. I was in Mississippi. And and, um, I went outside, and it was raining, and it felt like God was kissing me all over my head, like a million little... And it felt so good, and I could feel it all into my feet. And then I became so jealous of bald-headed men. I was like, no wonder they, they're so relaxed and so calm because they can feel the elements just relaxing their spirit through their through they crown chakra. You know, they, didn't have, they don't have no hair blocking the elements of what God created. And then the next day the sun had came out and it burned the whole top part of my head. And I realized I needed sunscreen. Um, my melanin don't defend against that. Uh, Cause that meat right there had never seen the sun like that. It was a wonderful experience. And then, then I had came back to California and met, met up with my boyfriend and he was like, ah, oh, damn, you really cut it all off. And, and then he licked it and it was nice. Tiffany, who are you voting for next year?
I, I feel like that's a personal question. I, it is. I'd like to go back to the original story. That was unbelievable. By the way, this is what I love about you. Thoroughness. There's no, no, no shortage of wearing your heart on your sleeve, mm -hmm. bearing it all. You know, the first time I saw you stand up comedy, uh, I think was at the Laugh Factory, but I know you'd been jamming before that. Were you all, when did you start stand up I, I comedy? I started at the Laugh Factory. At what age? In 1996. It's a good year to be alive. <laughs> it was a great year to be alive. What? I was in foster care yeah. and I had two choices either go to psychiatric therapy, the Laugh Factory comedy camp. And I chose the comedy camp. Give it I up, give be it up for her. fucking stand up comedy, <laughs> truly saving lives and building them at the same time. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, were you a funny kid, though? Because the first time I saw you, I think it was a handful of years in, but you were fucking, you know, nobody wanted to follow you. But, but I feel like right out of the gate, you were like, I'm going to just do what I'm going to do. Yeah, um, I was a weird kid. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't, I don't know if I was, I, yeah, I was funny. I was class clown. You, you were. Know, I was most unforgettable. I was like the most popular kid in school. I could hang out with any group. I hung out with all the weirdos and the cool kids. I mean, I was, I was, I was interesting. I was fun. You were fun. You are fun. Thank you have you. to be fun to at least try uh, the, the art of stand up comedy. But, yeah, you can clap. Okay. Are you, are, I think. Look, I, I don't want to force you into a slow clap. <laughs> I think you have to be fearless to yep. do stand-up comedy. I think you have to have a certain level of fear and a certain level of um, mental illness. Sure. <laughs> oh, I think we're all, you know, fucked up. For sure. But I think that's what makes us beautiful. Figuring out, you know, how to deal with uh, all the demons you got, you know. But also letting those demons come out to play from time to time. Yeah. I'll, I'll be in the bedroom with my wife, Robin, and, uh, <laughs> and I'll be playing Halo in the other room. Uh... But I put one of those pillows with my face on it in the bed and spooning her so she thinks I'm fucking there. And, and when I can hear her wake up, she's like, you know, where are you? So I'll put down, you know, I'll say one last thing. I usually play kids, you know, overseas. You know, it's, it's more fun to talk shit to children uh, when you're playing Xbox Live. You know, oh, oh really, Rudy? Oh, yeah, where, where are you right now? Greece? Why don't you suck my American dick, you piece of shit? <laughs> I'll be honest, it's, uh, you know, I got an issue with uh, video games, but, but my point is, Tiffany, when I come back to bed, I've got a, I've got a new lease on life, you know? I want to try, try better and do better, you know? And I think that's what stand-up gives you the opportunity to do. You, you might have a bad set, you get up the next night, you turn that ship around. What do you love about stand-up? I love that I can express myself and, yep. and express things that I think... It's funny to me, and I feel like, uh, like I talk about really hard things sometimes. Yep. A lot of times I talk about some difficult things, and I feel like if you can't laugh about those things, you'll never heal from them. So every time I'm on stage, I feel like there's a little healing happening for me and hopefully for others. Let's go. Look, give it up for that. You said you wouldn't learn something tonight, Peter? You were fucking wrong, dude. It's my man, Peter. Um, Tiff, you know, being honest on stage is a big deal, but also, uh, you know, understanding when to when to sh shut it down, turn it off. And I think, uh, you know, you've you've told me uh, about some of the uh, jobs you had prior to stand up. You used to work at the airport. Do people know this? I, I I would if they read my first book or listened to the audio book, they probably know. Do you this. read the first book? Okay, let's. Uh, they, uh, they don't read in here. They don't. <laughs> Are you an audiobook crowd? Okay. They, they, but they don't, they don't probably read or listen to anything from a black woman, let's be clear. Look at the room. Yep. Yep. Well, you said it. I didn't, but. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Did anybody read or listen to Whoopi Goldberg's book? One Sad White Woman, <laughs> which is the name of my next book, but currently <laughs> it's called We've Got Issues. <laughs> Get it at Barnes and Noble, Amazon. I mean, did you see? Have you seen that new game show that's on TV? Uh, What's it called? The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, where they the, the floor? I think it's oh, called. Oh, with Rob Lowe. He's yeah, like, yeah. I'm Rob Lowe. The floor <laughs> is a scary. I haven't seen it. What does he say? Oh my gosh. I was watching it the other day and it was doing this thing like, do, do you recognize this person? And they every time a black person came up, they would go pass, pass. <laughs> 
past. And it was like iconic black people like Steph Curry and, and Tracy Ellis Ross. And, 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 and they did not recognize any of these people. And I was just like, wow. White people do not care about us. <laughs> I mean. Would you recognize them? Oh, yeah. I know who Tracy Ellis. Yeah. I mean, I could look. I, I went as Martin Luther King Jr. for Halloween last year. <laughs> you want to talk about not respecting black people. I respect him enough to wear blackface when it's not cool. <laughs> but you should, you could be a Steve Harvey. They didn't recognize Steve Harvey. Well, that, that one I have a real issue with. <laughs> Family Feud might be the greatest show of all time. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. What, you, what's your favorite game show? Well, yeah, tell me your favorite game show, then I want to ask you another question. My favorite game show? Yeah, Are like you... you're late not putting something on. <laughs> mm-hmm. What makes you laugh? Because Harvey does it. Harvey, Harvey, I mean, it plays on, like, Cycle on my YouTube, like, three hours of that. But then I also, I, I really got into Squid Games. Squid Games? Yeah, I really got into that. What's, and that's a, uh, what's that? <laughs> well, there was, a, there was a TV series called Squid Games. Right. And uh, that was, like, based in Asia. And then they went ahead and made it an actual game show. Yep. And it's on Netflix, and I like it. Love that. You ever watch Love is Blind on Netflix? Is that the one where you can see people's penises and stuff? I love how excited you are, first of all. <laughs> I no, love that show. Is that a game show? Or that is it's a, a game show. It's that's, a British game show. Oh, I thought it was a dating. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I thought it was just like a, way to, a new way to date. So. I mean, it really is. It's like they, I think that one you're referring to, it's called like, Bud or peanut or what's it called? It's called, I don't know, but it's Badissi? yeah. Badissi? You talking about Badissi? Penis, what'd you say? Badissi. Badissi. What's a Badissi? <laughs> Maybe I don't know what black people talk about. <laughs> the wait, 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 Badissi, wait, 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 no, no, wait, hold on. What were you talking about? I was talking about, so the game show, they'll, somebody will come out and they'll show just the, the bottom half. Mm -hmm. So it's a penis or a vagina. Mm -hmm, and, then mm -hmm. the other, and then they'll have to choose if they like it or not. Mm -hmm. And then if they pick the penis, then they'll show the top half. And it'll be a guy, like, and he's like, hey, my name's Greg. And then she's like, I actually don't like your penis because your face sucks. <laughs> and then she's also buck naked. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, yeah. I saw that. I yeah. saw it. I watched it. I it's watched, funny. I watched all of it. Love is Blind is cool because, you know, they'll have, they're talking in the pods. They have mm -hmm. to get to know each other. But then, you know, sometimes they meet up and they're like, that's not what I thought you were going to look like. <laughs> There's a girl right now named Chelsea. I watch a show. And she told, <laughs> Who's seen Love is Blind on this season? I haven't seen this season. Tib, I don't want to spoil it, but there's a girl, and I want to hear this from your perspective. This girl, through the pods, there's a wall up, emotionally and physically, and the guy, his name's Jimmy, and he goes, so uh, what celebrities do you look like? And she goes, well, people have told me I look like Megan Fox. And he was like, oh, I can work with that. <laughs> and spoiler alert, she does not. <laughs> she looks like Megan Fox's friend <laughs> who works at Applebee's. But she's, no, she's fine. She's a good looking gal, but she, you know, she really, that's a big sell. So then she comes out and, and, and the door's open and she's like, here I am. And he's like, Hey, man! <laughs> and he's thrown off. So, I mean, in the dating world, is it, are you currently... Wait, in, was he naked, too? Oh, so this is a different show. Oh. Uh, that was... I thought you were talking about Love is Blind. No, you were talking about Badussi still. <laughs> no. no. No, Love is Blind, the clothes are on. Oh, Love is Blind, the clothes are on? Yeah, what I don't show? know what the name of the show where you're naked is. It's probably... What is it? Naked attraction. Oh, naked attraction. Yeah. Oh. Would you ever do that, or is that too much? To be naked? Like that for a, for a show like that. Maybe if I it's, mean, I guess... I mean, it, they, they can't afford me. Let's fucking go, player. <laughs> they can't afford me. Can't afford this shit. No. You can try all you want, CW. What if CW just started doing softcore porn? <laughs> They could use oh, so it. So Love is Blind. Oh, so they talk to each other in a pot. I haven't watched Love is Blind. Okay, put it in that. the queue. It's fun. 
Okay. Now, I will tell you this much. You hosted a show. Was it uh, Kids Say the Darndest Things? Yes. I you guys watched that? that? Tiffany fucking crushed that shit. Yeah. ABC, uh, they know family, right? Is their slogan or some yeah. shit? I don't know. But they... Uh, it's ABC Family. ABC Family. Yeah. Now, Tiff, that really, that really made me go, God damn, you have no fucking weaknesses because kids... You know, being able to banter with them is one thing, but to make them look good and feel comfy at the same time is a skill. Did, did they ever say shit that they didn't put on TV that you were like, like did yeah. some little white kid named Tanner say the N-word or something? No. No, but there was this one girl who, uh, she, had, she had behavioral issues. Yep. And she was really bad, and she had told her grandma, her grandma was sitting in the audience, and she was like, I was like, so what do you like to do for fun? And she goes, I like to hit my granny. I said, you what? <laughs> you what? I said, that's elderly abuse. She said, I have to hit her to make her get things done. And I said, what? <laughs> and like, I'm a black woman. I don't play with that hitting your elders shit, right? And, yeah. then, and then she was looking at me like she wanted to hit me. And I was like, you better watch yourself, little girl. Say, don't be hitting your grandma. She said, I'll do what I want to do. And I said, no, you will not. And then the grandma was like, I forgot to give her her coffee today. The grandma yelled that out. I forgot to give her her coffee today. And then she went, shut up, grandma. And I said, don't you talk to your grandma like that. What you think this is? You're not going to disrespect your grandma for the, all these nice white people. <laughs> and um, she was a little white girl, too. Uh... <laughs> That might be why the show's not here. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, and you know. I, told, I told them to, to take her off the stage. I didn't want her on the stage no more. I just, I don't know. I, I cannot, I zero tolerance for disrespectful children yep. to their parents. I just, yep. you can't do that in front of me. I just, I don't play like that. So. I don't play that either. I didn't beat her or nothing, but I definitely gave her the eye and was like. Oh, oh yeah, you gave her that. Oh, shit. What was that you just did with your neck? That was cool. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's yeah. See, I fuck. I I can't. You know. That let you know I bob and weave on you. I I bust you up. You ever been in a fight? Yes. They're fun. I gotta be honest. A good bar I, fight from time to time gets my juices flowing. Man, I miss fighting. Ever since I got famous, I can't do it no more. <sighs> well, not with that attitude. <laughs> Who wants to fight Tiffany Haddish live on stage? Shut I the fuck will up. Whoop your ass. Uh, that that is a that is something that I think a lot of people struggle with, which is finding someone not only in their uh, own life but brings out the best in them. And now, uh, currently, a uh, uh, relationship status: you in it to win it, or you, you're looking, uh, you're hungry like the wolf. What does hungry like the wolf mean? I don't know. Like I'm like I'm thirsty for some dick. Sure, yeah. Are you out there? Are you looking for love? I'm not. I know I'm not looking for it because it's it's men lined up. I'm just trying to. Do, I'm Let's just, go. You know, I'm just chilling. Well, speak. Well, speaking of men lined up, Tiff, uh, I would love to play a little game with you. Okay, if you're mm. down, because now don't be trying to show me up with this. <laughs> We should try to figure out a deck and pitch that show. <laughs> uh, I, I do. I would love to play a game uh, before we wrap this up, and uh, it's kind of a throwback game to the dating game. Okay, uh, I would like to uh, take myself and a couple people from the crowd, and, uh, and let you kind of just do uh, as you are good with people, getting to know people, bringing out the best in them, but finding out not only what you want but what they want uh, in a little uh, dating game rendition called the Dating Game with Tiffany Haddish. You want to play it? Oh yeah. I you guys want to play it real quick? I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need a couple people from the audience to come up and play this with me. Uh, who we got? Uh, uh, sir, yeah. What's your name, sir? Your name's Jesus. Yeah, that'll work. Come on up, dude. Yeah, Jesus, go the long way, sir. Yeah, I know you can walk on water, but take the steps, gangster. Uh, and who else? I uh, who's this guy? He don't. He don't want no. Sir. What's your name? Vinny Mancino. All right, come on up, Vinny Mancino. Guys, give it up for Vinny Mancino, huh? All right. Uh, sir, grab a microphone back there. Jesus. Vinny, grab a mic. Jesus Christ. What up? 
Oh, Jesus, go the other way, player. Uh, You're okay. a little too confident right out of the gate, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Tiff, you can scoot on down. There you go. Uh, all right, so uh, we hey, got... This was the day I stopped believing in Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are, honey. Okay, I, Jesus, I think I might need you to sit down. <laughs> no, you're good. Are, Jesus, are you in a relationship currently? Single as fuck. Single as fuck, okay. Uh, and what are you looking for? Um... <laughs> okay. Tiffany, blink twice if you want me to throw him off the stage. You need it. How, wait, how old are you? Quantos questas? <laughs> Sorry, right, cuantos años, cuantos años. There we go, there we go. Oh. Oh. I like the first one better, cuantos oh. yeah. yeah, how much, how much, how much? How much do you cost, how much? How much you cost, all right. Uh, Jesus, um, we're gonna play a little dating game action, Tim. He did not answer my question. Yeah, answer the question, Jesus. How old are you, Jesus? Guess. Oh, shit. This motherfucker yeah. is 21 years old. Go sit down. Are you 21? No, he's 32. How Jesus, how long have you had your ears pierced? Uh, um, like three years. Okay. And what do you do for work? Is that the only holes you got, I don't know. Jesus? He's got cat scratches on his arms. Why You're not do you want to know that? Okay. Is this guy gay or something? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on with Jesus? Adrian, are you with Jesus? You're not with Jesus. Who are you with, Adrian? Your buddy. Who's your buddy? Joel. Joel. Okay. Uh, who thinks we should swap Jesus for Adrian? Appreciate you coming up. Best of luck. Thanks for coming out, man. I'll take that. One more time for Jesus, huh? Gracias, Jesus. <laughs> Thanks for coming up, player. Look at those guys. <laughs> Look like they're auditioning for the same part to play the same... Just different beards, same body. All right. Adrian, how you doing? I'm good. Into the mic, player. How's it going? So, Tiff, uh, Adrian, uh, earlier we, we, we started talking to him. He uh, stopped uh, drinking, and I said, what did you replace uh, drinking with? And you said, Adrian. I said, jacking off. God damn it. Into the fuck. You know, let's, who thinks we should replace Adrian with somebody else? Oh, Thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a hard knock life. Who's this guy? All right, how about a third white guy, Tiff? We tried to be diverse. Come on up, sir. All right, well, okay, look at you just fucking, okay. That's one way to do it. All right. Grab the mic, stand on back there. Nice shirt, by the wow, way. Thank you. Wow. Good for oh, you. Yes. Stand on back, player. What's your name? Uh, Jacob. Jacob. Tiff, thoughts so far? Huh. She's, she's about to climb Jacob's ladder if you know what I'm talking about. What era are you from? Well, I like this guy. I love this guy. All right. All right, Tim, I think this is what we're going to go with. So uh, let's play a little dating game. Uh, are you guys ready to play the dating game with Tiffany Haddish? We'll wrap this bad boy up. Here we go. The dating game with Tiffany Haddish. Welcome to the dating game with Tiffany Haddish, where I have the opportunity to date one of these Caucasians. I'm gonna ask these guys a few questions and find out some things about them and see who's willing to take this ass home. <laughs> I just wanna know from all three of you, what is your level of education? Jacob, you go first, baby. Oh, I got, I got a master's. Oh, and uh, what? Uh, optical engineering. Optical yeah, engineering? Optical engineering. I do, I do laser stuff. You yeah, do yeah. laser yeah, stuff? I know, I know, I know With lasers. like eyeballs and shit? No, Because like, optical is eyes. No, like defense shit. Like defense boing, boing. shit? Yeah, like... like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you own the company, you optical engineer it? No, no. So you an employee? I teach astronomy, so I know telescope shit, too. Oh, yeah. you all about the stars? Yeah, I can tell you some star shit. I'm a star. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
You got, you got some good energy. I, I agree. <laughs> okay. Um, sir with the hat. What's your highest level of education? I uh, got kicked out of grade school, but I eat pussy real good. <laughs> can't compete with that. <laughs> you said you can't compete with that, Jacob? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I mean, that beard looked like you eat some good pussy to me. Yeah, I mean, they say mustaches are better, though. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, you can, sh you can shave your beard into a stash, you fucking idiot. That's what I'm thinking about it. I don't know. I like, I, I, like, I like beards on my thighs. I like the way it feel on my thighs. I highly disagree. When you're clean shaven, you're more aerodynamic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. What was that? Be coming up for air every uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, Tiffany, and, uh, Phil, I, I, what, what's your highest level of education? Well, I went from grade school to middle school to high school, skipped college, and went right to uh, getting my, my master's degree. Don't say master's around there. Easy. <laughs> You are from a different time. <laughs> so I got my ma <laughs> I got a degree. Jacob, uh, do you know your credit score? I value credit scores. Do you know your credit score? Oh, of course, yeah. What is it? It's like 9,000. <laughs> do you have any student debt? Oh, uh, no. Because, <laughs> see, I value credit score because it tells me how responsible you are as a man. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be responsible with your credit, that means you'll be responsible with my heart. That made sense facts, to me. Facts, facts, facts. Man with the hat, do you, know, do you even have a credit score? <laughs> my credit score is none of your fucking business. <laughs> But I'll make you my queen so you won't have to ever worry a day in your life again. <laughs> I feel like you're gonna make my titties smell like Newports and I'm cool. <laughs> and my pussy smelling like an ashtray and shit. It already it's smells like menthol, so what's the difference? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? Menthols are illegal in California. Yay. <laughs> Where are you from? Yeah. Uh, different parts of New York you probably wouldn't know about. You can ask me the kid question or what? <laughs> I already feel like there's a bunch of kids out here. Well, how many, how many kids do you have? I'm happily married, seven kids, but you would be my guma. Yo, what? My guma. What the fuck is a guma? Uh, it's, uh, it's like, a, you know, a, like a lady on the side, you know? But, like, she knows about the wife and stuff like that. Uh, uh, how you black people say down-ass chick? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Vinny, what the fuck? <laughs> What the fuck? What, I speak a language. What do you mean? Come here for a second. What do you mean? I don't think I like the way that you're conducting yourself right now. I'm just trying to get a woman no, right no, here. No, no, no. I, I brought you out up here because I thought you'd compliment Jacob swiftly with your cool fucking Curious George hat and your strip club DJ suit. Okay, but you're fucking my shit up. You're being rude to my guest, Tiffany Haddish. Okay, it's not fucking fun. Look at me right now. Go ahead, Jacob. I, I was gonna ask, can I get one? Right. Oh, he's such a bitch. What the fuck are you doing right now? What the? F what? That's all good. What the fuck kind of move is this? <laughs> all right, I guess it works.
<laughs> See, I felt good. <laughs> I'm sorry you guys had to see that. That was sexy, Dr. Phil. Appreciate it, Tiff. I'm, I'm I don't sorry. think Jacob would be very good at role playing. Yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> He's terrible, in fact. <laughs> but I think we all learned a valuable lesson here tonight. First of all, did you guys have a good time? Not bad, not bad. I think we all learned something very valuable, you know? The going gets tough, the tough gets going. You gotta make that change for yourself, right? And uh, as we saw tonight, you know, we had to swap up a couple contestants. Adrian, Jesus, thanks for trying. Good luck with the jack-off situation. But also, uh, you know, uh, listen to your body. You know, if that's what you need, and you're not hurting anybody, you know, keep on, keep on, you know, just, you know, I don't know, you probably jerk off too much, is what I'm trying to say. That's why you wear glasses. <laughs> you jack off too much and make you blind. And you, can, and you can read more about that in my book, We've Got Issues, <laughs> chapter five. You jerk off too much, you're gonna lose your ability to see the world. And look, we had a lot of fun here tonight. Anthony Jeselnik came out and, and, tried to, and tried to make me feel bad about myself. <laughs> but I love him for that, because we gotta, we gotta throw darts. We gotta take shots at each other, okay? Because it's, it was all out of love, and I'll pick up on that. And uh, just like Vinny coming up here and uh, you know, trying to connect with Tiffany. Vinny, I know what you were doing, okay? You, you had a crush on someone, and you wanted to let them know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> he can't do, he can't Can we do not it. do the music and the sound effect at the same time? Uh, <laughs> This is a low budget production, man. Low budget, low budget production. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We have the budget. We have the budget of a Badusi uh, reality <laughs> show. <laughs> now look, Mitch McConnell might be dead soon, but but the fact that he came here tonight was a big deal. One more time for Mitch McConnell, huh? That's a that's a real treat and a real uh, and a real desire to to be better. And I, wanna, and I wanna tell you this much, there's a lot of people I've met in my life, but nobody who steps up to the plate bigger and harder and delivers uh, uh, more on a consistent level than my girl Tiffany Haddish. Give it up for her real quick here. Thank She's you. got a new book coming out May 7th called I Curse You With Joy, is that right? That's right, that's right, I Curse You With Joy. And Jacob, I mean, you came in swinging, okay? You don't, you don't, uh, where are you going? Oh, I don't know. You came in swinging, uh, but, but I think that, uh, <laughs> are you eating SpaghettiOs out of a can? I got a little blood sugar. <laughs> were, were those in your pants the whole time? <laughs> hey, Tiffany. <laughs> I knew that wasn't no real dick. Come on, Steven. Wait, let me get some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to do that. This motherfucker owed me ten dollars. And that's chapter seven of my book. This motherfucker <laughs> owes me ten dollars. Did you guys have a good time tonight? You are an amazing audience. One more time for Tiffany Haddish. Let her hear it. Huh? Make some noise for the one and only Tiffany Haddish. Keeping on for Anthony Jeselnik, the great Anthony Jeselnik, Matt Friend, Jeremiah Watkins. I've been Dr. Phil. One more time for my wife, Robin, Melissa Villasenor, huh? Robin, let's take an Uber pool on the way home, baby. We got SpaghettiOs left over. Good night, everybody!